let cops keep that illegally taken stuff. A.G. Lynch says. This is from the Washington Post, and their title is The Feds Have Resumed a Controversial Program That Lets Cops Take Stuff and Keep It. This is by Christopher Ingram. The Justice Department has announced that it is resuming a controversial practice that allows local police departments to funnel a large portion of assets seized from citizens into their own coffers under federal law. The Equitable Sharing Program gives police the option of prosecuting some asset forfeiture cases under federal instead of state law, particularly in instances where local law enforcement officers have a relationship with federal authorities as part of a joint tax task force. The Justice Department had suspended payments under this program in December due to budget cuts included in last year's spending bill. In the month since, we made the difficult decision to defer equitable sharing payments because of the $1.2 trillion bill rescinded from the Asset Forfeiture Fund. The financial sovereignty of the fund has improved to the point where it is no longer necessary to continue deferring equitable sharing payments, spokesman Peter R. Carr said Monday. The Asset Forfeiture Fund acts in many ways like a revolving fund. Yeah, a government revolving fund comprised of, if we actually believed in the Constitution, illegally seized assets. Carr explained in a follow-up email, Forfeited proceeds are being deposited throughout the year to replenish the funds that are simultaneously flowing out of the asset forfeiture fund to pay for approved agency expenses. Yeah! Like that one cop, uh, I forget what uh, uh, state he was in, uh, uh, state cop that uh, spent $26,000 to buy cowboy hats like that. He noted that when the Justice Department announced the suspension back in December, it remained very eager to resume payments as soon as it is fiscally feasible to do so. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what they need to do. Uh, then I'm going to skip through part of this article. A wide-ranging Washington Post investigation in 2014 found that police had seized $2.5 billion in cash from people nationwide since 2001. That makes them way bigger thugs, way bigger uh, thieves than the people that they call thieves. Some of them are, actually are thieves, but the cops are also doing the bidding of, of government thievery. Uh, $2.5 in cash from people nationwide since 2011 without warrants or indictments. See, that's the big thing. This is where this is coming from. You are guilty until proven innocent in this system. They take your money, and then they go ahead and spend your money before you have been able to get your money back. Which, you know, why are they taking your money in the first place? Because they're the government, and they have the guns. And if you don't allow them to take your freaking money, they're going to kill you. Which is kind of what thugs do when, when they hold you up with a gun. But the... No, no, just just move on. Just move on, Paul. Nothing to see here. In response, then Attorney General Holder announced new restrictions on some federal asset forfeiture pra practices. These restrictions were meant to limit the ability of state and local law enforcement officials to choose more lenient federal forfeiture guidelines over state laws. Listen to that. They were meant to limit the ability of state and local law enforcement officials. To, so, so Eric Holder, he was like, you know what, today... The government is going to allow you to have a little bit of a longer leash. That's Lou Fiend's thing, by the way. He's on Freedom Fiend's the longer leash campaign. You should check that out. But critics say the reforms don't go far enough and still leave discretion for local authorities to choose more permissive federal laws by acting as part of a joint. So that means even if your state passes laws to try to prevent you from taking people's stuff, you can go ahead and turn to federal law to allow you to take poor, uh, people's stuff. Asset forfeiture is fast growing in 24 fast growing in 2014 for instance. Federal authorities seized more than 5 billion dollars in assets. Dude, that's more than the amount of money lost in every single burglary that year. You just take that in 
burglary was a little bit under four billion dollars, but the federal the, the these these federal authorities took five billion dollars. Now that's federal authorities. We don't even know what's going on at the state level. What are these state and local folks seizing? I'm sure that if you did the math, it's uh, much higher than five billion. Because that is government. This asset forfeiture demonstrates in a naked sense exactly what state government is in its current coercive form. It is organized theft. Nothing more. Reformers had hoped that the suspension of the program in December was a signal that the Justice Department was looking for ways to rein in the practice. But that no longer appears to be the case. This really was about funding. Not a genuine concern about the abuses rampant in the equitable sharing system, said Scott Bullock, president of the Institute for Justice, in an interview. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, you could have had Loretta Lynch go ahead and say that. Listen, man, it's not about your liberty. It's about the federal government's ability to fund the purchase of cowboy hats for a police department. $26,000 to buy cowboy hats for a police department. If we don't take your stuff, who will buy cowboy hats for the police? Oh, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. So the article continues. The suspension of the program had outraged law enforcement groups. Of, the law enforcement groups were outraged. How dare you? How dare you cut us off from this money that was illegally seized from citizens who were not proven to have even committed a crime and weren't even charged with uh, making a crime. We are seeing a lot more pushback from law enforcement, Bullock said, even to the point where they are making budgetary appeals saying, we need this for our bottom line, our cowboy hatch. If we can't buy our cowboy patch, who will build the roads? And that's something that's been unusual to see. And it goes to our point about what this is really about, raising the revenue, he said. Law enforcement groups appear to have had some successes in rallying members of Congress to their side. In January, New Hampshire Senators Kelly Ayoto and Jean Shaheen called on the Justice Department to restore the payments. Now, I want you to take it in. Kelly Ayoto. Do you know who Kelly Ayoto is? She's a Republican. Jean Shaheen is a Democrat. They all support this because all of them, Republicans and Democrats, are slave masters and enablers of the state which is nothing more than organized crime. So thank you, and thank you for voting, because when you vote, what you do is you stop all this from happening. Oh, no, when you vote harder, nothing happens.